Congregations invited to rise. Today we celebrate Reformation Day. Reformation actually falls this coming Saturday, uh, but we celebrate it today. And Reformation Day is that day that we remember how God in history restored to his church the central comforting teaching of all the scriptures, that our salvation was given to us by Jesus and his work alone. And so our hymns and our readings today focus us on that thought. One of the other main things that happened in the Reformation, though, was that church alone was not where people were taught any longer to receive that comforting word of the gospel. They were also taught to seek that out themselves during the week in their homes, and our sermon will be aimed in that direction uh, this week as we reflect on Psalm 1, uh, which talks to us about meditating on the word of the Lord. Our service today is the service of Matins, page 219, page 219. O Lord, open my lips. Amen. 
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I invite you at this time to turn to the introit, which you can find on the insert in your bulletin. The introit comes to us from Psalm 34, and we'll read that responsively. I will speak of the test, your testimonies before kings, O Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Come, O children, listen to me. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. You're invited to be seated for our hymn. Our hymn at this time is number 584. 584.
seed to life. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is from St. John chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We then hear Psalm 1, which will be the basis for the sermon. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chafe that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the day of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. 
O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. We rise to hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and we've never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you can say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Common Responsory, page 221. Forever, O Lord, your word is set firmly in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Then the text that calls for our attention this Lord's Day is Psalm 1, which says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the seat way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. You're invited to be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You all know this phrase, or at least the concept, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but every week that prayer of the church that we usually pray after the sermon, that longer series of prayers, is something that our church body produces. Or that is at least to say that they send out sort of a template every week as a starting place for those prayers. I then edit them, deleting some petitions and adding other ones, adding specific prayer requests, and even changing some of the wording to meet the theme of the day a little bit better. And in those prayers, every week, certain things always get mentioned. We pray for the church. We pray for the sick. We pray for our country and those who lead it. But then there are other things that sort of get added one week and then might be missing the next. We might pray for those who struggle with mental illness. We might pray for those who have no job. We might pray for husbands and wives. We literally could end up praying for anything. But just last week, there was a petition that I don't really remember ever seeing in there before, and it said this, Let us pray to the Lord for the renewal of our lives of prayer and devotion. And it occurred to me, the more I thought about it, that in that prayer, what we were sort of asking for was that we would learn or remember how to fish. We're not praying in that prayer so much for a specific area of our life where we know we have a specific need, but we were praying that we might overall have a life of devotion and prayer, knowing that if we did, that would help us in every need. And that got me thinking early this week, how many of my sermons sort of give you a fish? And how many of them teach you how to fish? How often do I just offer you up a piece of godly wisdom or comfort 
Or how often do I remind you how you can find such wisdom and comfort every day on your own? Martin Luther, who we remember this day on Reformation Sunday, certainly did both in his ministry. He preached a lot of sermons where he just proclaimed a particular wisdom or comfort of God centered on Jesus and the salvation he offered. But he also taught people how to fish. In one of his most famous little letters, he wrote to his barber, Peter, about how he should pray. One of Luther's other great accomplishments is giving the people a Bible in their own language so that they could, day by day, meditate upon the word of the Lord. So today, let me teach a little bit about how to have a life of devotion and prayer. The basic idea is actually quite simple. How does one do this? Well, let's steal the words from Psalm 1. You simply meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. Yes, that's what our text says today, that first of all the Psalms. This is what we are to do if we wish to be like trees planted by streams of water that bear fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither. What does that mean? What does it mean to meditate on the law of the Lord day and night? Well, it means that we are to have times of reflection on the Word of God in both regular and constant ways. By regular, I mean this, that we seek to do the same thing at the same time every day, ideally several times a day. It might be that you read the portals of prayer when you get up in the morning, it might be that you read a psalm before you go to work. It might be that you pray before your meals. It might be that you read a section of the scriptures with your family at the dinner table. It might be that you and your spouse pray prayers together before you go to bed. But regardless of the specifics, you have things that you do regularly that cause you to meditate on the word of the Lord and then fill your brain with things to pray about also. Indeed, our lives of devotion should include these regular times. But they also, those lives, should be times or should be lives of constant meditation on the word of the Lord as well. Now here, when I speak of constant meditation, I don't mean that we have no time for work or other activities because we've always got a Bible before our eyes, but rather that we look at our whole world and the activities that are happening day by day in front of us through the lens of the Word of God and its wisdom. When we see or hear about someone in need, we turn to our Lord in prayer. When there are decisions to be made in life, we let the basic wisdom of the Scriptures guide those decisions, ordering our lives according to God's ways and seeking His purposes. When we are among those who we know do not know Christ, we look for opportunities to share the good news that we have found in the Word and to ask the Spirit for His aid in doing so. Yes, we're to think about the Word of God constantly in this way. And so on the whole, we are to meditate upon the Word of the Lord in both regular and constant ways. And there are four practices that we can use in our life to aid that meditation. Four things we can do that will make sure that the word and prayer stay central in our lives. And again, these things are not complex by any means. To aid our meditation upon the word of God, we ought to read the word. We ought to memorize the word. We ought to sing the word. And we ought to pray the word. Each of these things is a great way to make sure that the Word of God does not just pass through one ear and out the other. When we read or memorize or sing or pray the Word, these things, these practices that God has given to us, God uses to implant His Word more deeply within us. So how many of those things are you doing during the typical week? Do you read the Word? whether it be just a verse or two and then stopping and thinking about it for a while, or whether it be reading a longer section of the Scriptures to put everything into context. Do you try to set parts of the Word to memory? Even if memorization is not your favorite thing or your best skill. 
Do you listen to music that carries the word into your ears? Or does most of your music just carry all sorts of junk into your ears? Do you read a word of God? And then pray about what that word of God specifically has talked about. For instance, today, when you hear in the gospel reading that Christ has freed you from sin, do you then ask God to help you use that freedom in great ways and for his purposes? Yes, we are to meditate on the word of the Lord day and night, setting aside regular times for it in our lives and yet never setting aside a time when we would not think about the word, no matter what we're doing. We're to read it. We're to commit it to memory. We're to sing it. And we are to pray it. Why would we live with such devotion towards the Word of God? Because the Word of God is our life. It is the light for our path. And why is it our life and our life? Well, because it reveals to us our sin, but more importantly, it reveals to us our Savior. Martin Luther himself found this out. While sadly the sermons of his day were very light on speaking about what Jesus had done for humanity, freeing them from their sins. He found that the scriptures he read and studied were full of such talk. And so you also, as you are meditating on the word day to day, will find that the wisdom of the Lord and the comfort of the gospel will be constantly in front of you. Not just on Sunday mornings, but each day of your life. So what if you're listening today and you recognize you have no regular time of devotion? What if you're so busy most days that you go through the word or go through the day without any thought for the word or any time spent in prayer? What if memorizing the word sounds like something kids should do? What if singing the word outside of church would make you feel pretty odd and maybe even a little uncool? What if praying about random topics that the Word has brought to you just seems downright odd? Should you just take comfort knowing that others feel the same way? That others are failing in the same way? No, that would be unwise indeed. Setting us up to wither away and to produce little fruit for God. We know that to not meditate on the Word of the Lord is sinful in itself and it ends up leading into all sorts of other sins when we don't know or trust the Word. Whether we never learned how to fish very well or whether we just have not practiced what we were taught, God's people should know what to do when our lives are not what God desires. Especially people in a church based on the Reformation, we should know what to do. We don't just try to work our way back to God and please Him through our works. No, we simply repent of our sins. We admit to God that things are not the way they ought to be. We repent and then God delivers to us the very thing that word that we so often neglect promises to us. He frees us through his son and that means we are free indeed because he lived and died and rose for us and now sits at the right hand of the Father. God forgives us of every sin. He forgives us of our sins of neglecting his word and of all other sins as well. He gives us his Holy Spirit. He gives us a new life that is eternal. And he returns to us his word. His word that is a blessing meant for every day of our life. Yes, he sets us free through the Son alone. As we hear his word, yes, on Sundays as we gather here, but throughout the week as well. Know this, as your pastor, I will keep serving up some fish. I'll bring you specific bits of wisdom and comfort that you need to hear. But I want you to remember always, also, that you need to remember how to fish. Meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. Let God renew your life of devotion and prayer as we prayed last week. For then, by God's grace, You shall be like a tree planted by water, producing fruit in season, and your leaves never withering. Amen. You're invited to rise.
Then indeed, may God bring us constantly to the comfort and joy of his word. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. At this time, we will sing our praises to our God in the words of the Te Deum, which can be found on page 223. 223. We praise you, O oh God. And since we continue to collect our offering uh, in the narthex, we continue then at this time with our prayers, which will begin with the singing of the Kyrie in just one moment. 
When we get to the collects, each one of those will end through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the congregation will respond, Amen. Besides those we have been praying for for some time, uh, we remember especially this day Bob Becker, uh, who was hospitalized in Duluth after complications with his cancer. Uh, We remember Walker Ravo, uh, who uh, broke his ankle and had surgery on that. And we also remember Steve Martin, who will undergo back surgery this week. Let us go to our Lord with our prayers, beginning with the singing of the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, the strength of the weak, the consolation of those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers on behalf of your servants who are ill or injured or recovering, including Pamela Berge, Peggy Harris, Tom Kosky, Elaine Stieg, Sharon Mosbeck, Christine Fierro, Bob Becker, Shirley Turrell, Walker Ravo, Steve Martin, Joyce Volk. Grant that by your power their sickness may be turned into health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, grant integrity and well-being to all who are in authority in our nation and in our communities. Grant them grace and wisdom to rule according to your good pleasure, to the maintenance of justice and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you withdrew yourself for times of meditation and prayer. Grant that we may so each day meditate upon your word and be strengthened with a good will to serve you and your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power. And grant that this day we would fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governess, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our next hymn is hymn number 580. And we will be seated for this, 580.
the gospel shows the Father's grace who sent his Son to save our race proclaims how Jesus lived and died that we might thus be justified sets the Lamb upon our throne sacrifice souls with guilt oppressed to come and find eternity We rise to receive the Lord's benediction. Our service concludes on page 228. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Then we remain standing as we sing the great Reformation anthem, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, page 656, 656.
You're invited to be seated. Glad to have everyone here today. Uh, being as uh, this is our celebration of Reformation, the next Sunday following Reformation is always our celebration of All Saints Day. Uh, and All Saints Day is that day when we remember and give thanks to God uh, for those saints that have gone before us in the faith and who now rest from their labors. Our tradition is always to remember those who are members in our congregation who have fallen asleep in Jesus during the last calendar year, but we're also willing to include any other Christian people uh, that have also died during the last calendar year that you would like mentioned by name in the prayers as well. So if there is someone from the congregation, we'll already have them uh, on our list, but if it's someone that's not a member of our congregation that died in the last calendar year that you would like remembered, uh, please put their name on this sheet, which I'll leave in the back uh, today as I leave. Um, also, uh, you're reminded uh, that uh, this Wednesday is our newsletter deadline, so if you have anything that you would like to go in the November newsletter, please get it to Luann by Wednesday morning, if at all possible. And you're also reminded we have our Young Families Group, and again, that's a group for anybody that's basically got children in any level of school, uh, and that meets here at Peace at 6 o'clock, and we eat together, and then we have a time of Discussion among the adults as the kids uh, play, uh, and then we meet at the end for a time of devotion. Uh, so that usually goes from about 6 to uh, around 8 o'clock, uh, sometimes a little later. But I certainly would love new people always to join us for that as well. Um, anything we need to say about blood drive other than I assume the forms are still out there? Okay, nine more slots open, so if you uh, would like to give blood, go ahead and uh, sign up or talk to Bev if you have any questions with that. Uh, anything else that needed to be announced today while we're together? I've got, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Thank you, though, for the reminder. The final thing is that women of peace, uh, those of you that are here, uh, if you will meet, should we go towards the library that way? Uh, uh, if you will meet today briefly, we did not have our meeting this week and we just need to discuss, uh, while we'll not have our full bazaar this year, uh, due to the circumstances, we want to talk about what, what parts of that we might be able to offer, at least to the congregation. Uh, and so uh, meet in the library afterwards for that discussion. Anything else? All right, the Lord bless your day and I'll greet you in the back.